Hi guys, today's video will help you optimize your DP solutions better. We will see how a very small code change can help you pass through those test cases that you have been struggling for. I know that there are a lot of types of DP questions. We are going to be focusing on those that require us to make a 2D matrix like this. Now what do we do in DP? We find answers to smallest of problems and then we use those answers to find solutions to bigger problems, right? That is why even while filling this matrix, there can be multiple ways, right? One way to fill this matrix, if the number of rows and columns were same, was to fill the diagonal values first and then fill either upper half or lower half of the matrix. So we would fill these values first, then these values, then these values, then these values, then these values, then these values and so on. Okay. But that is not the method that we are going to discuss today. We are going to talk about the questions in which we fill the matrix in traditional way. That is row by row. We fill this row, then this row, then this row, then this row, then this row. Or say even column wise, this column, this column, this column, this column and so on. Okay. Now you must be wondering, is this optimization really necessary? Then yes, let me tell you there are a lot of questions where this can be applied. Questions like longest common subsequence, knapsack problem, minimum edit distance problem, subset sum problem and so on. And I have discussed this in the end of all the videos that I have created on dynamic programming. But I thought let's make a video just on this. All these questions have a common pattern in them. To find that, I have written the formula for LCS and knapsack. So what do we do in LCS? If a condition is true, then we get the value from its diagonal value. So if I am at this box and if the condition is true, I will get the value from here and add one, right? Otherwise, I'll get the maximum of these two values, this value and this value. And this will be true for any box. So if I am at this box, I will need these three values, right? These three values can determine the value at this box. Similarly, for this box, I will need these three values, right? Now let's see what we do in knapsack. So there is a condition. If the condition is true, then I get the value from left, that is over here. Otherwise, I get the maximum value of this or somewhere from the row above, from this row, okay? So if I am looking at this box, I will either get the value from here or somewhere from the row above, right? But if you see, in all of these questions, to get a value at a particular box, you need the values only in the row above that and not in the rows before. So if I am finding value at any box in this row, I need values only in the row above and not any of the rows before that, right? So instead of maintaining this entire matrix, I can reduce it to two rows and same number of columns. Does this seem too much work to you? Let me tell you the core things that you will need to do to get this optimization. So anywhere where it is written M of IJ, all you have to do is make this i as i mod 2. Say so m of i mod 2 j. Similarly, wherever it is written m of i plus 1 j or anything, it can be j plus 1 j minus 1, it doesn't matter. Just this i plus 1, you have to make it i plus 1 mod 2. And that is it. Just adding this mod 2 will reduce your space complexity so much. Let me explain you how. So if there were m rows and n columns, right? Now m value can be very huge. It can be say 1000, 2000, any value, right? Now you're reducing this entire thing, the space complexity of O of m n to just O of 2 n, which is just O of n, right? So you could be saving so much space over here. You could be saving some 2000 rows and converting that to just two rows. Let's see how this will work. So I have numbered all the rows over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? What will be i mod 2 values corresponding to these values? 0 mod 2 will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. As you can see, this is alternating, right? So this is what we are going to use, these alternating values of i mod 2. How it will work? So initially how we were filling, we would fill this value first, right? So same will happen over here also. We will fill this value, right? Now we'll fill the first row, we'll fill the first row. Works till now, right? Now when we come to filling this row, what we are actually doing is, we are going to fill the second row using the values in the first row, right? Now what change did I do? Instead of filling the second row, I am again filling the first row. I'm overriding the values of the zeroth row over here. Instead of filling this row, I'm filling this row. But I'm still using the values of the first row itself. So I am filling the second row here. I'm filling the zeroth row over here. In both the cases, I'm using the values that were in the first row, right? Now again, when I come here, here I would be filling third number of row, right? 
instead of that i will fill now first row with this so i will fill this row with the values that were previously filled so where did i fill the values so in for this row in this row right so essentially i am doing the same thing it's just that when i am filling this row i am using the values in this row and when i am filling this row i am using the values on the row above that so i am just alternating because in the end i just need two rows to make it very simple when i fill the values in the first row i use the values in the zeroth row when i fill the zeroth rows i use the values in the first row as simple as that i need only two rows i hope the optimization is clear to you even for this optimization you should keep two things in mind the first thing is that the formula might involve i minus 1 value right and if i value is 0 then it will become 0 minus 1 mod 2 and obviously that would be wrong right so instead of writing m of i minus 1 mod 2 we can write i plus 1 mod 2 because for any value of i i minus 1 mod 2 will be same as i plus 1 mod 2 So make sure in the formula that you have developed, if there was i minus one, you should be using the values of i only from one, not before that. But if you still need the value to be zero, then you can use i plus one mod two instead of using i minus one mod two. The second thing to keep in mind is that instead of reducing the number of rows, we could have reduced the number of columns as well, right? So we could have converted this into same number of rows and two columns, right? but we have to make sure that in our formula we are using just the values in one column before and not the columns before that right so for to explain that more let me show you so in knapsack problem as you can see over here i don't just use the previous column i might need any column before that right so if i am using this matrix i cannot reduce it to two columns i can reduce it to two rows right but if i made a matrix that was transpose of that So I would have just exchanged the i and j values, right? So if that would have been the case, I would have been able to reduce the matrix to two columns instead of reducing it to two rows. So whenever you are reducing the number of rows or columns, you have to be sure that you are using the values only one row before or one column before, and not the values before that. But if it's a question like LCS or minimum edit distance problem, then you have an option. You can reduce the number of rows or the number of columns. in that case what you could do is you could compare which value is really huge so if the number of rows are really really huge usually then you should reduce to two rows but if the number of columns are really huge then reduce to two columns do try out this optimization guys there are a few hard problems on lead code which you won't be able to pass all the cases for if you don't apply this optimization so let me know how you like it and please don't forget to like share and subscribe it will mean a lot to me thank you